Let me start by saying that green screens can be really useful, but cutting out from a green screen can be really annoying. And actually it's trickier than you might think. And simply cutting out the subject isn't always the best solution anyway. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this with minimal effort and no cutting out required. And the best part is you can apply these color settings from one image to another image in seconds, which as you can imagine is a big time saver. And if you'd like to follow along, you can download an image of my face from the video description, whether you want to or not is up to you. But anyway, let's open up Photoshop and get started. Right, so here's my face. And as you can see, we definitely need to remove that. We have the blur around the hand, which would be a nightmare to cut out. And we have those wispy bits of hair. So first I'm gonna show you this underrated tool that is amazing. We're gonna go here, click and hold and select the patch tool and then drag around this object here, which is actually a light on a tripod. And then with that selection, drag this to a clear bit of green screen. And just like that, it's gone. Amazing, right? Now we're quickly going to do one more thing. So let's go to image and down to canvas size. Let's make the canvas a lot wider. And of course this adds a lot of space to the left and the right sides. Let's select the marquee tool and then make a selection around these big areas of white. So I'm holding shift to select multiple areas and then go up to edit and down to content aware fill. Now there are some settings on the right. You can play around with these or you could just do nothing and click OK and you end up with something that looks like this, which considering what it had to work with is pretty good. Now let's go and add a new layer, select the brush tool and then from the color picker, we're going to sample a green from that background. Nothing too dark or light, but somewhere in the middle. Now, yes, of course, there will be those who don't like this very manual brushy-washy technique. I get it, but it's just one of those techniques that I keep coming back to. It's quick and easy, and ultimately it works. But if you have a technique that you use instead, let me know down in the comments. Now I'm just brushing in some green over those dark shadows. And next I can select the eraser tool and you can adjust the size using the left and right square brackets on the keyboard. And this also works for the brush tool. Now you can see the edge is a little bit hard. So let's go and bring that hardness all the way down to zero. This will give this a nice soft feathered edge. And because I went a bit crazy with that green brush, I can now remove some of that. Now, if it's too pronounced, you can adjust the opacity to make that more transparent. And as you can see here, turning the layer off and on, I've probably gone a bit too far. So switching back to the brush tool, let's bring that flow down and then brush in a bit more green. And by bringing the flow down, this enables me to brush that green in a bit more gradually. Now I can select a darker green from the color picker as well and brush in some shadows of my own. So we'll maybe do something nice and subtle in the corner here. And then if I hide the layer with all this brushwork, you can see how it looked before versus how it looks now, which has helped to remove some of those harsh shadows. Let's call this layer extension, and then we'll call this top one uh, dodgy brushwork. Very suitable. So here's where we were, and then here's where we are now. Okay, so that's the quick and dirty extension done. Now let's work on the background. Okay, first let's add a new adjustment layer. We'll go to hue and saturation and you can select green from the dropdown or you can click this icon here and sample a green directly from that green screen or whatever color your background is. Let's adjust the hue and you can see we can change the color. However, if we zoom in nice and close, you can see it's all pixely. There's a lot of artifacts and that green around the edge just looks awful. However, there's an easy fix for this. Let's go down to this color range slider here. And if we drag this left one, to the left, well, you can see I go pink, but it's also removing that green from around the edge. And how you manipulate these sliders will depend on your image, but now you can see I can adjust the hue and that green around the edge has gone. Now I can change the background to any color I like, and some background colors do work better than others, but if you get those artifacts appearing again, you can also adjust these other control points on the color range slider. And depending on your image, it's really just a case of tinkering until you get something you're happy with. So you can see here, the hair looks good, and you can see the green around my arm and my arm hairs has gone, and even the blurred fingers, that green around the edge has completely disappeared. Now I can fine tune this even more by adding a selective color adjustment layer. And because my background is now orange, I'm going to work in the red channel first. And by adjusting these sliders, I can fine tune that background color even more. Now, because my background is orange, I can also switch over to the yellow channel and do the same thing here. And depending on the color of your background, you may need to select a different color. Now, if I go and select the layer mask for the hue and saturation layer, I can use the brush tool with black to remove any color. And let's just bring that flow back up to 100%. And what I'm doing here is very subtle, but if I did change the background to blue, I may have ended up with a blue beard and well, blue beard, well, that sounds kind of cool actually. And if I were to carry this technique on, I could restore the actual color of my face just so I don't look like a Smurf. Anyway, another good adjustment layer to use is curves and you can play around with the graph to get different. Oh God, oh no, no, not like that. Let's undo that one. And uh, maybe we start with a preset 
first. So I'm going to select medium contrast. Maybe that's a bit too much. So I might select linear contrast and you can adjust the control points on the graph if you like. And finally, let's turn off all of the layers and go back to where we started, which looked like this. And after those quick adjustments, we've now got this with no cutting out required. And if you'd like to learn 13 tricks of photo manipulation, definitely check out this video next, which quite bizarrely features a desert and a fidget spinner. Enjoy.